Now this is one of the best and most powerful warrior builds in Dragon's Dogma 2. The warrior is a very strong vocation that excels in tanking, knocking down, and staggering enemies and bosses. With its high damage output, the warrior can unleash devastating blows, but it does require charging your skills for maximum impact. And in this guide, I'll cover the best skills, setups, and gear upgrades for the warrior. So let's check this out. So first I'm going to show you destroying this dragon. Now the warrior is a very strong vocation that has a really high damage output, but the warrior is slow when it comes to attacking, so you have to make every swing count. Now the warrior does have a barge attack, which is a fast attack, but the range is really short. The barge attack is a really good skill because you can charge through majority of enemies attacks while not getting staggered. You want to use the barge attack as more of an opener when the enemy first attacks you to power through the enemy's initial attack and forcing them to flinch. The barge attack is really strong in the early early levels, especially if you don't have a lot of weapon skills. However, due to its short range, I did use this skill less often once I unlocked more weapon skills. And in order to reach maximum damage with your skills, you do have to charge up your skills and make sure you release the attack as soon as it's fully charged for even greater damage. One of the warrior's strength lies in its ability to resist staggering when charging skills, allowing you to tank through most attacks. However, if you sense that the enemy is about to move out of the way of your attack, then it will be better to just strike without fully charging your attack because it's better to at least land a hit even if it's not fully charged rather than risk missing your attack due to charging but i'll go over everything in more details in their dedicated sections Okay, so next for the weapon skills. Now the warrior has a lot of powerful and fun weapon skills. Unfortunately, we are limited to only four weapon skill slots. So I did choose the weapon skills that are powerful and personally appealing to me. But I will also go over some alternate weapon skills that are powerful and you can switch up your weapon skills depending on your playstyle. Okay, so the first weapon skill I'm using is Ravening Lunge. And this skill will charge you forward and you can run through enemies in your path. While running, you can press the attack button to execute a forward stab. And if you manage to collide with enemies against a wall, it inflicts even more damage. Now I primarily use this skill for quick traversal across the map. Its speed makes navigating through the terrain a breeze, and I consider Ravening Lunge to be a must-have skill for the warrior, especially for traveling throughout the map. The next skill I'm using is Heaven Ward Sunder. Now with this skill, you'll do an upward slash, and if you charge this skill, you will jump and do an upward slash dealing more damage. This is a very powerful skill that can hit multiple times, and is really useful on flying enemies. This skill is also really good on bosses, doing tons of damage. And the next skill I'm I'm using is windstorm slash now with this skill you will unleash series of powerful slashes now there's a timing element to this skill and executing the timing correctly allows for lightning fast attack now this is a really fun and powerful skill and it can easily clear groups of enemies and melt bosses now mastering the timing for this skill is key to maximizing its effectiveness so i recommend practicing to get it down but if you're not comfortable with the timings then i recommend to use another skill because there are other skills you can use where you can just charge the skill to easily clear groups of enemies enemies and melt bosses. And I'll go over the other skills you can switch this skill out for when going over the alternate skills. And the last skill I'm using is the Warrior's Meister skill, Arc of Might. This skill will deliver two powerful swings, but in return it will drain all your stamina. This is the ultimate boss killing skill. Now the best way to use this skill is to charge this skill for maximum damage. Now the charge time is about 8 seconds, which is quite long. Therefore, it's best to use this skill when the bosses are knocked down. However, if you think the boss will move before you fully charge this skill, then it's best just to use this skill when not fully charged because it's better to land a hit on the boss rather than risking a miss by fully charging this skill. Okay, so an alternate weapon skill that you can use that is really good is Raising Sweep. And with this skill, you'll do a spin attack cutting down enemies in all directions. And if you charge this skill, you'll do two spin attacks. Now, this skill is really good to clear trash enemies that are surrounding you. And if you're not comfortable with the timing element from Windstorm Slash, then this skill will be better to use to easily clear trash enemies. Another good weapon skill you can use is the Luvian Strike. With this skill, you'll leave up and plunge down on an enemy dealing huge amounts of damage. And this is actually a really fast weapon skill compared to the other weapon skills the warrior has. This skill can easily one shot any trash enemies and deal huge damage on bosses. Now this is the one skill I used in the early levels when I didn't have good gear. But once you get really good gear you can easily just kill trash enemies with your basic attack and there are stronger skills you can use on bosses. Another good weapon skill is mountain breaker. And with this skill you'll do an upward thrust that does huge damage and can knock targets off 
off balance or render enemies unconscious. This is a very strong skill that can easily knock down bosses. Now the thing is that this skill is similar to Heaven Ward Sunder, but it has more knockdown power. Now I personally like Heaven Ward Sunder better because Heaven Ward Sunder can hit multiple times doing more damage. But depending on your playstyle, you can switch out Heaven Ward Sunder for this skill, Mountain Breaker, if you want more knockdown power. And another good weapon skill is Indomitable Lash. With this skill, you'll do one devastating strike and you want to charge this skill to do huge amounts of damage. Now the charge time is about three seconds for this skill. So make sure the enemies or bosses are stationary so you don't miss. Now you can replace this skill for the Meister skill Arc of Might if you want a shorter charge time for a powerful strike. However, the Meister skill Arc of Might deals a lot more damage if you're able to hit the boss compared to this skill Indomitable Lash. Okay, so next for the core skills, and the warrior has some really good and powerful core skills. The first core skill is Bulwark, and this skill will reduce the damage taken when charging your attack, which is really good for tanking damage. The next core skill is Breakneck Strike, and this skill will increase your damage when you instantly unleash your attack when it's fully charged, making your attacks even more powerful. And the next core skill is Chain of Blows, and this will increase your attack speed on your light attack Mighty Sweep when you time your attack. And this skill is really good for clearing trash enemies, and the timing for this skill is pretty lenient. And the last core skill is Repulse. And with this skill, your charge attacks can parry the enemy's attacks and knock them off balance, which is really good on a lot of enemies and bosses. Okay, so next for the augments, and you can switch around your augments depending on your playstyle. Now for this build, I did focus more on damage and knockdown augments compared to defense and survivability. I am in New Game Plus, and I have all the best equipment, so I didn't need more defense and survivability. But in the early levels, taking defense and survivability augments may be more beneficial. So the first augment I'm using is Dominance from the Warrior, and this will increase your knockdown power, which is really good for knocking down bosses. And the next augment I'm using is Lethality from the Archer. And this will increase the damage dealt when striking a target's vital, which is really good for destroying bosses. And the next augment I'm using is Exaltation from the Mage. And this will increase your stamina recovery speed, which is really useful in any situation. And the next augment I'm using is Verve from the Thief. And this will increase your strength, and with more strength, you'll do more damage. And the next augment I'm using is Constancy from the Sorcerer. And this will increase your knockdown resistance. And since you'll be always in the front line, this is really useful to not get staggered and knocked down. And the last augment I'm using is Zeal from the Warfarer, and this will reduce the stamina consumed when performing a weapon skill, which is really good for stamina management. Okay, so next for the equipment. Now I am in New Game Plus and all the best equipment is from the Dragon Forge, except for the cloaks and rings. So all of my equipment is from the Dragon Forge, but the cloak and rings. And in order to trade items from the Dragon Forge, you'll need Rhyme's Life Crystals. And Rhyme's Life Crystals are farmed by killing dragons. So for the weapon, I'm using the Dragon's Bite, which is the strongest great sword in the game. For the head armor, I'm using the Blazing Soul. For the body armor, I'm using the Varshara Scale Skin. And for the leg armor, I'm using the Executioner's Greaves. Now for the cloak, I'm using the champion's mantle but be aware that the cloak is not required and it's just for style wearing a cloak will increase your weight and if you're carrying a lot of weight you will run slower but since i'm in new game plus and weight is not an issue looking more stylish is more important to me and next for the rings now the first ring i'm using is the ring of quickening and this will increase your stamina recovery speed which is really useful especially if you're using the warrior's meister skill arc of might and the next ring i'm using is the ring of vehemence and this will increase your stagger and knockdown power which is really useful on enemies and and bosses. Okay, so next, where to upgrade your gear. Now, I upgraded all my gear using the Dwarven Enhancement. And the Dwarven Enhancement is obtained from either the Brocker Smithy at Back Batal or from Gout Staffer on the Volcanic Island. The Dwarven Enhancement will boost all your stats, but it also provides knockdown power for your weapon or knockdown resistance for your armor. However, it's important to note that the Dwarven Enhancement will also increase your weight. And since you'll be on the front line, getting staggered or knocked down can be annoying. So having knockdown resistance is really beneficial. Therefore, I highly recommend upgrading all your gear with the Dwarven Enhancement. And next, if you want to check out my stats. Now, I'm currently at level 64 and in New Game Plus, and I have all the best equipment. Now, the Warrior is a slow attacking vocation, but very strong when you connect your attacks. Now, this is one of the most fun and satisfying vocations I played, especially when you're hitting your most devastating skills. Now, the Warrior does suffer slightly when fighting fast flying enemies like Harpies due to its slow attacks. But if you can get the timing down with your attacks, the Harpies will be no problem. And ideally, you want to have a Mage Pawn with this vocation for heals and buffs, and a Sorcerer Pawn for 
for magic damage as the warrior does lack in magic damage but using any pawns will be fine because the warrior is a tank that can unleash huge amounts of damage now the magic archer sorcerer and thief deal a lot more damage compared to the warrior but the warrior is an exceptional tank and has the ability to easily stagger and knock down enemies and bosses which makes up for this difference and next i'm going to show you some gameplay destroying a dragon Okay, so thanks for checking out one of the best, strongest warrior build in Dragon's Dogma 2. The warrior has exceptional tanking and knocking down abilities, while also dishing out huge damage. And with this build, you can easily destroy any enemies or bosses that stand in your way. The warrior has tons of great and powerful skills, and I showed the best ones that I use. But there are alternate skills that are also really powerful, and you can switch up your skills depending on your playstyle. Hope this helps and more videos to come, so stay tuned. And don't forget to give your pawns a high five.